get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Live from the Sweet and Snack Show Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. We're live at the Sweet and Snack Show. I'm here with the founder, Haas, of The Daily Crave and um, introduced by our friend Aaron. So how did you come up with the name and the company, The Daily Crave? So um, I had a brokerage company before this, and before that I was a food distributor. And one day driving home, I got the news that one of our biggest brands fired us after 15 years of managing their business. Sales were up, everything was good. They wanted to go to a bigger national company, which we weren't. We were a local food brokerage company. We did, you know, brands. You did like, too good of a job for them, is what you're did. saying. And uh, we had you're brands like it. Newman's Own Organic and many wonderful brands. And it really upset me because we had done nothing wrong and everything right. We basically put them on the map in California, and um, I could have been you know, mean and go replace it with another item. But I always had it in the back of my mind that I had enough experience, I had built enough brands, distributed, brokered enough brands that I can do my own. Right. So I literally called my wife. Now I'm doing about 90 miles an hour, <laughs> literally, uh, coming from San Francisco into Folsom, California. And um, I said, let's pick a name for our new company. And she goes, what, are you out of your mind? I said, no, let's get behind the like, yes. PC. <laughs> well, yes, we all are a little bit nutty, right? Yes. So um, I asked her to get to the trademark site and try to pick our company name. The first name that came to my mind was The Daily Habit because snacks are something that you, know, you do every day and it's right. habitual. And um, that was taken by a TV station, actually. So I said, what would be like a habit even better I crave snacks every day, I'm a snacker. Um, the Daily Crave, I think it will have tremendous opportunities by looking like a newspaper bag, which um, everyone will recognize, it will be distinctive, and um, the name was not taken. That's how the name was taken. I like the Daily Crave better. I love that better yeah. because there's no negative connotation to it. So um, We did that. I had sold veggie chips and sticks and healthy brands as a broker before, so I knew that product sells and there's a recognition out there that I don't have to spend a ton of money explaining to people what veggie chips are, what veggie straws are, and things like that. So I said, okay, it's going to be snacks, it's going to be a product that's co highly consumable, and I don't have to educate the public. With the bag, with the kind of design that we have in mind, it'll be amazing. Next two calls were to two of my friends, and I said, this is what I want to do, are you guys in? And they said, Yes. What does in, what does in mean? <laughs> Did they know what they were signing up for? <laughs> no, they didn't. There was no budgeting. There was no anything at that time. I'm literally still driving 90 miles an hour with steam coming out of my head because I'm still upset about what had happened. But now I want to take it into a positive direction yeah. rather than... You've directed your energy absolutely. into a positive way. No, I'm so determined to do this. So they said, yeah, I will do it with you. I said, okay, great. Um, next one was to my designer. I said, literally take the Sacramento Bee newspaper, change the name to uh, Daily Crave. Huge breaking news. And then go to the future competitor website, take their veggie chip picture and put it in the middle of it. <laughs> Send it to me. He goes, what are you doing? I said, I'll explain to you later. <laughs> but I need that in my office when I get back home. So he did that and um, then called the packer that I knew my competitor used, and I said, would you pack for us? And he goes, absolutely, but you have to buy 50,000 cases <laughs> of each item. I'm like, 50,000 cases? I don't even have a bag. I have nothing right now. I said, okay, send me your agreement, and we'll deal with it. So literally, that's how the company started. That's yeah. what we were talking earlier about, the two-hour period. Exactly. The it's case. more like a 30-minute period. <laughs> this all happened. <laughs> no, I mean, there's a lot of conversations going on between yeah. my wife and I, between my partners the designer and trying to explain to them that really what I'm looking for and what I want the bag to look like. Right. So that's where uh, things wow. started and 
I would say within less than four, four and a half months, we had our first bag um, and uh, we sold the truckload to the East Coast and a truckload to the West Coast and we were up and running. What uh, did you start with? What kind of product was it? It was veggie chips and veggie sticks. And what flavors? Just salted, regular salted. salted. In, in our industry, in snack industry, salted usually sells two to one versus flavored mm. because it appeals to more people. Right. You, may like, you may not like spicy or barbecue, or but cheddar. Exactly. Yes. So what flavors do you have now? Oh my I'm God. i holding the uh, vegan white cheddar. I immediately was gravitated towards this. Exactly. So um, in our lentils, we have Himalayan pink salt, aged white cheddar, smoked gouda, tomato basil, and spicy sriracha. Mm. In our quinoa, uh, we have gouda romano with cracked pepper, chili with a hint of lime, Himalayan pink salt, and bourbon barbecue, which is out of this world if you like a barbecue mm. chip. On the veggie side, we have salt and vinegar straws, barbecue veggie chips, uh, spicy sriracha straws, and now the newest one would be the organic vegan white cheddar, which should hit it off the, out of the bar, ballpark. So Haas, talk about the evolution of the products. You start with the, the salt, the sea salt, and because it's a big commitment just to go with one other flavor, right? You're getting truckloads of this stuff, so how do you branch into the different flavors? How do you decide what to actually take on next? So we knew that those two items are going to give us the head start that we needed so we can work on even better products that are proprietary to us and exclusive to us. Right. So at the time that I had the veggie chips and sticks selling like crazy uh, into the marketplace and growing at 100, 200%, you know, month over month, year over year, we were working on our lentil chips. I wanted something that had, you know, four to five grams of protein, that was made with even better ingredients than the veggies were. And so we partnered with the company and we put 55% roughly lentils and the rest are like chickpeas and other ingredients that goes into it. That veggie chips and sticks gave us the time and the financial resources we needed in order to launch the lentil chips. And while the lentil chips were in full swing and being distributed and becoming number one literally overnight, versus any other brand that were out there for years, we were working on our quinoa chips. And when the quinoa chips launched in 2017, we were working on our organic veggie straws. There's so, always something in the pipeline, it seems always like. Always something in the pipeline, and it's because the consumers want variety, and we want to cater to them. We want to give them a product that is not only non-GMO, gluten-free, higher protein, but not organic. So organic is our newest expansion, which we're really, really concentrating on. So where can people get them? Well, nationally, and also in 22 countries. Um, as of right now in Chicagoland, you can find them in Jewel, Woodman's, Fresh Time, Meyer, and many other wonderful retailers that support our brand and our cause. Okay. And then I want to talk about two things. One, um, you know, starting this, any company is not easy. So some of the challenges, and then on the flip side, what are some of the a uh, proud moment for you. What are, what are some of the challenges? So initially when we launched, we had used the wrong uh, word for sticks that was trademarked by our competitor, which we weren't aware of. And our attorneys never caught it. They trademarked the word sticks? Sticks with the X, oh. not a CK. Yeah. And we weren't trying to copy them. We just thought it would be cooler to have sticks. You know, this is happening so quickly that I didn't have really enough time to sit back and say, okay, let's make sure everything is right. you know, taken care of. And our attorney never caught it. So they came to us at our fair show and they said, you have to tear down your display. I go, why? They go, you're using our trademark. And we literally had to throw away uh, about $70,000 worth of bags and wow. cases before we even started the company. But if you're determined if you know you're on the right path. you just path. take a Sharpie and put an extra X on the end or something? I mean, the, the problem is with our bags, as you can see, there's many stories. Um, there's oh, funny fictional stories. Up, yeah. And then there is informative stories there. So it was all over the place. That's terrible. So I couldn't just That's stick terrible. around. That's <laughs> terrible. But again, the determination was there. Yeah. And the knowledge was there that this product will be a home run for our company. 
So we did it, got over it, learned a huge, quick uh, lesson not to do it again, wow. and um, changed our attorney, obviously. <laughs> Hopefully you did some of those 70,000 bags, like make a coat out of it or something. No, everything got thrown out. I actually got charged 15% uh, over that cost for discarding it. And my packer had to do Absolutely that. Absolutely horrible. Um, so let's not think about that for a second. Um, what's so been that a, was the hardest part. What's been a proud moment? I think seeing our product in people's shopping carts is a feeling like I've never had before. Yeah. It was unbelievable. It was, um, I knew that the consumer liked the product and then talking to some of those customers saying that I buy this for my baby, I buy it for my family, and I've been buying it for the past six months. I think that's the most um, proudest moment that I can think of. Seeing the product on the shelf across the country, in other countries like Korea, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and other countries, how could, what could be better than that? I think food is um, something that connects everyone together. Um, whether you have them at your home or you sell your product in their supermarkets that they take to their home. Yeah. I mean, obviously you have a lot of industry knowledge, right, as a food broker. And what are some of the lessons that you have learned as a food broker because you've been doing that for a long time? I think having the right packaging, having the right ingredients and attributes combined with the right value is the key to success. So if you have a product that is great, phenomenal product, but it's priced incorrectly, you will miss a portion of the market that you cannot afford to miss. You need to be mass appeal, yet know that, for example, in natural markets, in our lentil chips, Himalayan pink salt's number one, sriracha's number two because it's vegan, both are vegan. In conventional, aged white cheddar is number two because there are less people that are vegan that shop the conventional stores. You have to know your market, you have to know your product line, who you're catering to, place it on the shelf at a great price, most people will give you a try. Yeah. So where should we point people towards? Where should they go online to check you out? Amazon.com right now is our biggest online distributor. Uh, we're proud to be in there. Um, in the regular stores, as I mentioned, you could find us in ShopRites in New York, New Jersey, and uh, East Coast. and Myers and Jewel uh, in Chicagoland. And what's your website? It's www.thedailycrave.com. The Daily Crave? The Daily Okay. The Daily Crave, guys, check them out. Um, I think my personal favorite is the vegan white cheddar, but they're all good, so thank you. Thank you very much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find this.